now we can talk up a little bit about um, therapies for MDS. Um, first, we'll talk about the role of immunomodulatory agents. Um, Thomas, can you um, comment about um, their efficacy in MDS? Um, what's your approach in the lower risk patients using these agents? Uh, how do you manage them? I think there's uh, two different situations. Um, with basically the dichotomy between uh, 5Q uh, MDS and uh, non-5Q uh, MDS when we talk about uh, immunomodulatory drugs. Uh, the situation is pretty straightforward for uh, 5Q MDS. We know that uh, response rates are uh, clearly um, in the 60 to 70 percent uh, range with uh, potentially pretty prolonged uh, duration of response. Um, there's still a matter of debate uh, if we need to start from the get-go uh, lenalidomide uh, for a patient uh, as a frontline therapy or if you can wait after a failure of uh, ESAs. Uh, based on the guidelines, uh, we don't have uh, the same answer. Um, European guidelines still recommend to use ESAs uh, first. Uh, some experts will recommend that by changing the natural evolution of the disease, natural history of the disease, we may have a more uh, profound impact on uh, the pathology using lenalidomide for client. So I think definitely uh, a situation where we don't have a straight answer for the moment. Uh, we know that probably uh, lenalidomide uh, using frontline will give, uh, I would say, better results than ESA, uh, just on the response rate because 5Q are not the best candidate uh, for ESM. After that, um, I don't think we have enough data for the moment saying that uh, having uh, lenalidomide frontline versus having lenalidomide after ESA really change uh, the overall survival of uh, the patient. I don't know, Rami, uh, what do you think about it? But right, yeah, so I think there are a couple of important points you mentioned. The Vision 5Q, I think, is more settled story. Uh, some decision models in, in the past done by Michael Sakaris group, they looked at the threshold where mm -hmm. starting a treatment before ASA would be more beneficial. If you have a 40% response rate with the agent or more, you could argue that you could go for that as a first line. I think what we know now with data more uh, presented from the follow-up on the studies, that actually patients that become transfusion independent or have cytogenic response, you are probably impacting the natural history for the, the disease. Uh, so those patients would have less leukemia transformation, probably better overall survival. So that's to your point, you know, uh, I, I think it's always important to remember that with particularly the 5Q up front, we are going to see cytopenias. Those cytopenias predict response. Uh, you still start with the higher dose because the aim is probably to get into that cytogenetic response and then you dose modify, which is okay. Like most of the patients actually will end on a dose less than the 10, especially we are talking about the deletion 5Q because in two to three weeks, you are going to be stopping the treatment because of cytopenia and that's okay. And then you go to the next dose and then you maintain that dose. Um, I, I think your point is well taken. I think the, the challenge more is where to fit it in the non-deletion 5Q. Uh, which you probably want to comment more on as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, so is it ESA failure followed by lenalidomide, or is it together? What is the? Well, in 5Q for the moment, it's uh, we don't have combination of lenalidomide and ESA. Uh, we, and have we were talking deletion 5Q, I yeah, think mostly. So we'll, yeah. So, so this not uh, in del 5Q. It's not the question. Is more uh, which agent to uh, should come right. first? Uh, in the non del 5Q settings for the moment, we don't have any uh, approval of the drug. Uh, so that's an important point. Uh, it's not sure that we'll have uh, an approval of the drug at the end. We know that the response rates are more modest uh, than what we see in del 5Q. Uh, probably for a uh, lenalidomide single agent based on uh, different uh, studies in the 20% range. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the big issues that we have uh, for the analysis of this study is that the endpoints that were used uh, to define a retrograde response may vary from one study to the other. So comparing the study may be a challenge, and we may have rates of transfusion independence of uh, erythroid response that may vary from one study to the, uh, to the other. And that's sometimes a little bit complicated. After that, we know that we're probably in the 20% range. Um, uh, to get to your point, it seems that a combination of lenalidomide plus ESA uh, trigger more response. Uh, there's some uh, recent nice uh, biological data showing that you can stabilize uh, the EPO receptor of the membrane, and maybe uh, that's one of the reasons why uh, you can uh, increase the response rate uh, by this combination. Uh, we also know that basically this response will be short-lived, uh, and that after w a year or two, most of the patients will progress. So we need to have other options. Right. So, so, so when you 
I'm so sorry. sorry. So, so if I, yeah, if I may add to Thomas, so I think, yeah, like basically the response rates in non-deletion 5Q are more modest compared to the deletion 5Q. But you could argue also that 25% is in the range of what you get with other agents sometimes okay. in, in mm. non-deletion mm -hmm. 5Q. What we do typically in practice is you have to select patients a little bit. So, you, you know, those patients cannot be pancytopenic or bicytopenic. Patients that are purely anemic uh, with lower risk, those could receive lenalidomide. Again, the challenge is it's not, on, on, uh, not approved by the FDA for that indication, uh, but there are several studies that had looked at that. Uh, the NCCN guidelines actually list that as an option. So to the point Thomas was, is bringing, there has been some preclinical data suggesting that the combination can improve. We conducted studies several years ago that we published that basically you took at patients that were ESA failure, lenalidomide failure, and they do the combination and we gained response back in like 20%. So that led to two big studies. One was published by the French group already that showed that they increased the erythroid responses. And at this meeting we heard almost two big studies right. presented, one from the US intergroup study that randomized patients between lenalidomide upfront versus lenalidomide plus uh, ESA, a high dose, uh, and there was a crossover arm. If patients were on lenalidomide alone, did not benefit, they could cross to the combination. So what we learned, you know, interestingly also to a very important point that Thomas brought is the response criteria though between those studies are different. In this study, they used uh, older criteria with major or minor erythroid responses, but much more strict one that requires hemoglobin increase, not just reduction in transfusions. So in the LEN alone arm, the responses in all the population were like in the range of 10, they almost doubled in the combination. What it was intriguing to me is, again, as the point mentioned, that in the non-deletion 5Q, LEN alone responses were in the range of a year or less. Now, when you look at the LEN ESA combination, some of those responses were in the average of two years. So you may be increasing the durability, but it seems a function of starting both of them together at the beginning. The Hovon study was a little bit more complicated for me. It was like almost an add-on strategy where patients started with LEN, then they added EPO stepwise at the 30,000 dose, then increased the dose, and then last step as GSSF, they tried to look at predictors of response. And it was more difficult for me to interpret than the intergroup study. Uh, my take home message was the combination probably by two studies, the French and the US, you know, improved the responses and maybe the duration of response. Uh, so again, the NCCI guidelines listed as an option. In the non deletion 5Q, I think it's reasonable to consider the combination as, as an option at this point with two studies. Can, can I be the devil's advocate?